she believed in every word of Jesus. And she says, I tithe from the salary. I tithe from a pension check. And yes, I tithe from my winnings from the casino halls. Somebody ought to say, hallelujah. So brother, next time you go to that casino house, put 10% away for God. what you wear, not for what you look like. And I tease my daughter because she goes through all various kinds of hairstyles. And right now she has this hairstyle where I'm totally convinced she lost the comb. But you know, I'm, that's not going to stop me from loving my daughter. And whatever way we come, and however the way we come to praise God, we should praise God without ceasing. We should be safe and secure in God's face and in giving God the glory. No matter what we wear, how we praise, what we do, as long as we're lifting up the name of Jesus, somebody ought to say hallelujah. I can come in blue jeans and praise God. I can come in a t-shirt and praise God. I can come in my flip flop and when I get to the point to where my feet hurt, my heels are too high, I can kick off my shoes and run around and give God the praise. How many want to just praise God without ceasing? How many want to just praise God unencumbered? How many want to praise God no matter what color you are, what pedigree you are, where you live, what you drive, and whatever thoughts you might have, you know, concerning the prejudice of your life and the prejudice of others and the racism that might be, you know, in the place. If you come to praise God, God will break through all of that and transform your lives consistent with God's word. Mrs. Mitchell's faith in God helped her deal with the disappointment of faith. For her faith in Jesus sustained her health and made her whole. But when the doctors gave up on her and, and said she only had six months to live, she reminded the doctors to stay in their lane. I said, oh my Lord, that's the first time I really heard of that. the doctor doctors, Jesus, and she would not accept any word from any other earthly doctor as long as Jesus is her Lord and Savior. And because he lives, she knows that she can live, and Jesus has the final word over her life. That's the problem with some of us because, you know, we get all upset, disappointed, disillusioned, angry with folks who say things about us. But I'm telling you right now, the greatest enemy that you have is your tongue. So you should not listen to that stuff. You should not pay attention to the folk. You should look up to Jesus. And if Jesus has ordained it, you can ordain it. But she knew that Jesus has all the power in the body. She knew that Jesus would bless her life unconditionally, save her from her sins, and grant her eternal life, which is why Mrs. Fitcher's un un unwavering faith in God calls us to claim her inheritance, which is kept for her in heaven. It's amazing the word says, your inheritance in heaven. You know, we read prosperity books and say, claim your inheritance right now. But I'm saying, you need to reach up to heaven instead of reaching out to what someone else says you should do. That is why she rejoices in the Lord, for she knows that God so loved the world. God gave. God gave her life. God gave her strength. God gave her breath. God gave her the capacity to love unconditionally. And that God gave his only begotten son, Jesus, who died for her sins. And when
when she told him to believe in God, she would be blessed by God's gift. And she's already claimed eternal life in Christ. Mrs. Mitchell told me about part of her life, and one story she wanted me to be reminded of is that I love everyone, regardless of race, background, or even who they worship. And she said, my, my first boyfriend was in, when she was in grade school, was a white girl. And this, her boyfriend grabbed her hand and took her to, to meet his mother. And his mother said, let that inward girl go. And she said that's the first time she experienced you a legend, boy. racism in this world. But that did not stop her from loving him and from loving the rest of the world because she loved everyone. And she says it's not the boy's fault, it's the parents' fault because sometimes the parents teach racism in our children. And if our children didn't know any better, they, we would all be one together, loving one another, embracing one another, and sharing everything we had with one another. For God so loved the world. You can say, for God so loved the black people. It says, God so loved the world. But Mrs. Mitchell's life was the epitome of was the quintessence epitome of praise to God. I heard her say once when the television was on and I think the football game was on, she turned the volume all the way down and she went straight at me and she said, Pastor, praise God. In times of loneliness, she praised God. In times of dealing with health issues, she praised God. And in times of personal struggles and excruciating pain, she praised God. In her heart, she confessed Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And in her mind, she believed that God is faithful and has forgiven her from all her sins. And since Mrs. Mitchell totally surrendered to Jesus and felt God's Holy Ghost power in her meditation and in her prayers, her soul was shout out, praise is what I do. For God, I want to get close to you. I lift my hands in praise. And though my circumstances don't even, even, even stand a chance, my praise outweigh the bad. I'm telling you, I vow to praise you through the good and through the bad. I praise you whenever I'm happy and I'm sad. I'll praise you and all that I go through for praise is what I do. See, Mrs. Mitchell's life is our character. It should strengthen our faith and praise to God. But Jesus could have come down from the cross just to save himself on Calvary's mountain, but he decided to stay and die for our sins. So my question to you, church, this morning, say to God, is he worthy to be praised? Is he worthy to be praised? Is he worthy to be praised? Jesus, who being in the form of God, counted not robbery to be equal with God. We need to praise him. Jesus, you know, who made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men, we should praise him. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. We should praise him and became obedient even unto death, even unto death on the cross where God highly exalted him. And because God highly exalted him, we should praise him and gave him the name which is above every name that is at that name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord and the God and the Father of our salvation. Come on, let's give God some praise. Is he worthy to be praised? He died for me and you and were buried in a bowl tomb. Is he worthy to be praised? He was worthy to be praised. But on the third day, early Sunday morning, Jesus rected from the grave and, and ascended into heaven. And the angel shouted out, praise him. And Jesus said, oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Is he worthy to be praised, church? Is he worthy?
worthy to be praised, but when we praise God of our salvation, like Mrs. Mitchell did, we can claim our inheritance, which is stored for us up in heaven. Somebody ought to say praise him. Somebody ought to say praise him. Somebody ought to say glorify him. Somebody ought to say, I've come to lift up the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to say, you know, Mrs. Mitchell was my example. Then because she loved the Lord, I understand that it's best that I would get on the train and just ride up to heaven when God called me home. Is somebody ready to praise God? Is somebody ready to lift him up? Is somebody ready to say hallelujah? If God woke you up this morning, you ought to praise him. If God started you on your way, you ought to praise him. If God put food on your table, shoes on your feet, clothes on your body, gave you some whoa, soap to watch off that tongue, you ought to praise him. Come on, let's give God some praise. Did God give you a mirror so when you're all dressed up you can look in the mirror and say I look good, I am a child of the king I feel good, I respond to my name come on somebody ought to say let's give God some praise is he worthy to be praised? is he worthy to be praised? is he worthy to be praised? the question is do you believe that Jesus is worthy?
Brought to you by Legend Boy. 